Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to an early look at Kenshi. This is a game that's currently available on Steam Early Access, it's currently in Alpha, and it's available for $19.99 on Steam. This is an interesting game, it reminds me a lot of Fallout, in the whole post-apocalyptic trying to make a name for yourself and survive and thrive. But where Fallout is more story-driven and event-driven, or not really event-driven, this is more event-driven. This is kind of a living world where anything can happen at any point in time except, you know, the planet exploding. Although that would be cool. <laughs> Note to the devs, give an option for the sun going supernova. <laughs> nice little cheater option. Supernova! <laughs> anyway, enough of that. So, let's take a quick look at what we've got. So far, you can hear there's music. If you've watched some other videos from some other people of older builds, it didn't have any audio. This particular build that's out now, it has audio. It, they've done a lot. I've watched some older videos on it, and there, there's like a whole new game right here. So let's take a quick boo at what we've got here for options. So we've got our general options, which gives you tutorial mode, which I'm going to put on again. Actually, no, we're going to take that off because that gets annoying sometimes. Autosave, which is quite nice. Showing character names, I kind of like that, but that's personal preference on that one. Edge scrolling is something that I always turn off because I can't stand going to the edge of the screen and having it scroll all over the, scroll all over the place because sometimes I will scroll out of the window to actually do something else. And then you've got some performance options here. So your squad size multiplier and global population multiplier. I don't know off the top of my head and have not tried what these do. I've not had any real performance problems with it either. Then there's some fixing things. So if you have issues, you can check these and see if that fixes your problem. Always handy to have these little options. Your graphics options. So you've got your view distance, just all your terrain changing things to help with performance. I have run this on my laptop and I didn't actually tweak this too much. I just kind of left it default and it actually ran really well. I got a good stable 30 frames per second off of it. So I haven't tried it. There's been two or three updates since I last tried it on my laptop. So I don't know how accurate it is now, but so far I haven't noticed any real performance degradation at all. I haven't noticed a huge performance gain either, but it seems to be really well really well done. It's fairly optimized for this early stage. And you got your standard resolution. There is a launcher before this as well that gives some more and duplicate options. So like your full screen and screen resolution, you have that in the launcher prior. But a lot of these distances you don't really have. It's really nice to have all of these. Good option selection so far. There's probably more to come, I'm thinking. But for now, this is really good. It's a good start. Got your audio sliders. This is intriguing to me, the VO volume. So far I haven't come across any voiceovers, but that's what this seems like it is to me. Maybe I just missed them, but that's kind of cool if there's going to be voiceovers in the game. And your controls. There are a lot of them. Nothing out of the ordinary. Like, you know, you've got your quick save, quick load, your speed changes. This game is isometric-ish view. It's not first person, it's not third person. It'd be more of a top-down, but you can move the camera. So you've also got game speed. It's more of a simulation style. So you can increase the speed, you can decrease the speed. There's four, technically, speed settings. There's paused. Normal speed, double speed, and I believe quadruple speed is what it is. I haven't actually timed it. You know, you've got your X and Y axis mouse inversion, 
your rotate camera buttons, just all sorts of different buttons to do different things. For the most part, you can do a lot of this with your mouse. Like moving your camera, you use your WASD to move around, tilt up and down, you can use your the middle mouse wheel. It, it's really well done. You've got key bindings for pretty much everything. Oh, rebuild nav mesh. That might be interesting. Reload biome data. These would be more, I'm thinking, debug commands? Toggle game editor. I've not tried those. Maybe one day I will. Anyway. Let's hop in here. We're going to a game that I have already started. And I have a crew. Not a huge crew, but I have a crew. All right, so here we are. Whoa, I uh, just teleported to the top of the building. So here are our crew members. We've got Tassilo Spike. Spike is the character I created. You start off with your one character. I created Spike. This is the default name. I pretty much just actually left him at default. But there he is, and if I could get down to him. Your camera is dependent a lot on objects in the world. So you will, like, you can see I'm kind of going down there because I was kind of on the bed. And I... It's just... I kind of wish it clipped through th some objects, like these objects, but honestly, now that we're this close, like, a lot of the texture work is really good. Like, this is the highest texture. It's really well done. It, it looks disastrous. Like, once we get really, really, really close, you, you can see, you know, some of the graininess, but you're not really supposed to get that close. For what it is, it looks really nice. The character models are pretty good. But there's <laughs> Tassilo. He's one of the most recent members of my gang. And he looks kind of old-ish. He's the old man of the crew, but Spike is me. Spike is my character. Meathead is my trusty sidekick. He was the first guy I got. Anyway, you don't want to look at my characters. No one wants to look at my characters. So it's still a bit buggy, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, hello, um, Spike, why are you in the wall? Spike, there you go. Oh, nope. Oh, there we go. Just took him a little while. Just took him a little while to figure out where he had to go. Pathfinding is actually really good in this game, although it didn't really show it there. So here we are in this just desert. This is just a desolate wasteland of a world. We're in this town that I don't remember the name of, so we'll check the map. And I can't really read the name. There's some problems with the map. The map is not scrollable. You can't scroll, you can't zoom, as you can see, I'm zooming and the world is zooming. I would like that and maybe, you know, a little bit higher contrast on the names or higher font. Uh, you can hover over top of them, so this is Telboos, Faction is Dead Cats, Relations is 0, Population Count is 67, Population Growth is 178.1, Population Max is 174. Population Count? Again, that's how many people are in there. Population growth? I don't understand that number. I'm not sure if that's like 178.1 people would populate this place in a year or what. But max population I also get. You know, it can have 174 people. That makes perfect sense. So there's a lot of stats in this game. There are a lot of numbers. So many numbers. There are factions too, and you can create your own faction. Like if you, let's close this. If you look down here, where are we? There we go. Under Diplomat, you've got Faction Name Nameless. That is my faction. I can actually change that, although I can't recall exactly how. Oh, uh, yeah, under Faction. So I can call it We Do Stuff. And that updates it to We Do Stuff. That is now my faction. My faction is We Do Stuff. And 
this is our different levels with the different factions. And this isn't actually all of the factions. This is just the ones that hate me. So negative 50, I'm negative 50 with the Sand Ninjas, I'm negative 50 with the Starving Bandits, negative 50 with the Dust Bandits, and I don't know what just happened there, but almost seems like we lost a bit. And the Cannibals were negative 50. And my outpost has been noticed by Starving Bandits, and I don't know what is going on with the... Oh! Ha! We're being attacked. Run! No! Oh, Spike is down. Spike is down. Cripes. So, this is the combat. Oh, no. Oh, come on. Come here. Everyone. Help! Help! We're being invaded! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Holy crap. Oh dear. We're all bleeding. Run! Run! What just happened? Uh... <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what just happened here, but I need to give Spike some first aid. So this is actually great. This town got invaded by, what are these, starving bandits? Yeah, starving bandits. And Spike is dying. He got critically, critically wounded in his stomach. And sadly, the guards weren't able to really handle that massive group. There was a lot of them there. I believe they've actually increased the size of the bandit groups. Oh, come on. Please save Spike. Which one of you is healing him? Are any of you actually healing him? Alright, Meathead... First aid. Meathead. Come on. First aid. First aid. Oh, he's in a recover coma. Okay, so he has been bandaged. Alright, let's... You bandage yourself. You bandage yourself. And you bandage yourself. So, this is great. So, you can see here your different stats. So, you've got green, which is healthy. Black will recover on its own in time. Red, it will never recover unless you first aid it. And yellow has been bandaged. So this is actually really, really good. And he is recovering nicely. Once you get to negative 100 in any of these particular situations... Where are you guys going? Oh, you're going to attack. Okay. Um, not great. Oh, goody. Guys, guys, stop. Oh my god. Run away. Run away. Okay, you guys can attack him. Hey, Tesla. Attack! God damn it! Attack! Attack! Both of you attack! Come on, take him out, take him out! Oh my god. Shit. Haslo, stop attacking. Stop attacking. You. Give yourself first aid. Oh no! No, stop it! No, Taslo! Run! Run! Oh my god! This place is just getting. Just. Just getting destroyed! Holy crap! I have never had this many huge invasions. My guys are nearly dead! 
Holy crap. Meathead. Okay, Meathead's okay. Meathead's okay. He'll eventually wake up. And so did that bandit. And he's getting his ass, can ass handed to him. Uh, you are not doing good. Spike, you're okay, but you're still in a coma. Taslo, you are okay. You deal some first aid to Meathead. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. We are not in good shape. So this is combat. And by doing this, you know, I got my head pounded in. I got some attacking. I would actually gain some additional stats. So this is how you gain stats. So you get, like, toughness. How is, how is Meathead doing? Meathead is slowly recovering. Holy hell, guys. I, I, I really think that uh, they've upped the whole attack thing. So, uh, he's probably going to be a recovery coma for a while because his chest is hurting. Yeah. How long are you? You're okay. As long as they don't get to a negative 100, they're fine, but they will not move. What I think... Uh, he's His leg is broken. I, I'm guessing that anyway, because he's hobbling. There's some clipping issues. But... The same thing goes with these guys. You're in recovery. Man. Oh, oh, oh. Spike is going to be... Or Meathead is going to get up soon. Meathead is going to get up. All right. You need to... No, oh, no. Not a hungry bandit. I need... Hot longs. Where? Oh, right there. Ha! Oh, cam auto saving. Oh, good. Meathead is up. All right. Taslo, you give first aid. <laughs> the guy with the broken leg is going to give first aid. How's Spike? How is Spike? Spike is still in a recovery coma. All right, you're gonna go pick him up. This is this is the game. This is entirely the game. This is well, this isn't entirely the game. This is part of the game. So I'm going to pick him up and I am going to bring him in. Now, by doing this, let me I'm on meathead. So my encumbrance is 62%. I am heavy. Uh my athletic bonus is 37%. So that's what I'll get for athletics is an additional 37%. And my strength for walking is going to be 9%. So I'll be doing better for walking. I'm going to bring him in here. And see about putting him... Yeah, it's one thing you can't... What the hell? You can't really put them in bed. I don't know why it's not... Alright. How's... You're in a recovery coma. Can you pick him up? Oh, that's... There we go. Can you pick him up? Oh, good, you can. Let's, let's get in here. Let's get out of the combat zone. Holy crap. That worked out well. So, this is... This is what you'll do. This is surviving. You are surviving, and that's annoying. <laughs> Let's move you there. And can I put him... No, I can't do any actions with him. Come on, go, go over here. Over here. Damn you. All right. Put him down. Put him down. Oh, oh, you just dropped him. Dude, you just freaking dropped him. Well, that was, that was a jerk move. 
Better not do that to me, meathead. You and I, we're buddies. Holy crap. <laughs> well, that's rude. Alright, so his chest is now down to zero. So, what I can do here is I can increase time. Oh, Spike is now up. And how is... He's still in his recovery coma. I've paused... Or, slowed time down. Now I've paused it. So, Spike, he's got one on his chest. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tell Spike... What the hell's going on? Alright. <laughs> Apparently, I have to do it up there. So, I just paid 100 credit and put him into bed. I <laughs> think I found a bug. <laughs> Actually, I think we've... It, during this video, I think we found several bugs. Uh, let's put him in bed. Can he... Can you pick him up and put him in bed? I doubt this will work. Oh, oh, he did. Oh, excellent. Awesome. That, that is great. So with them in bed, they will actually recover faster. So you can see I'm on normal speed and you can actually watch the numbers go up. And that's because... He's in bed properly. I guess putting them in bed works better than not putting them in bed. But yeah, they're healing up significantly faster when they're in bed. Which kind of makes sense as opposed to them just lying on the ground. You know, they're, they're theoretically warm and covered and protected. But while they're recovering, let's grab these two. Actually, I should... Whoa, hello. Let's, let's bring us down to regular speed. What are you doing? Just pacing back and forth, dude. So you can use your number keys to select up to 10 different characters. So you can have more than 10 characters. To my knowledge, I've never had that many. But you can do from 1 to 0 is your selection. And if you hold shift and click on their portrait... You can select multiples, or if you just click on them, you can select individuals. If you double-click on it, it will snap to them, which is quite convenient. And so I'm going to move Meathead and Taslo out here. And what we can do is, let's zoom in here, we can loot their bodies. So he's got a scimitar and a crappy pair of pants. So let's grab this scimitar. As you can see here, I've also got a backpack. And you'll notice that Taslo does not have said backpack. Oh, he's boots. You're getting boots. Excellent. So we can just head over here, loot these guys. Holy. All right, Meathead, you're getting this stuff. Put that in your backpack. What do we got here? Uh, a thousand charges with a hundred quality. Oh, nice. And a splint kit. That is just beautiful. Oh, you're getting a shirt. And a hat. And these boots are practically useless. Yeah, they don't really... Combat speed and athletics effect. I prefer to have the armor, to be honest. So yeah, you just kind of wander around and loot. And adding things to your backpack, like you can see with the stats of the backpack, the encumbrance is a 50% reduction. Oh, this guy is getting up. Was he a guard? I think he was a guard. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was a guard. Alright, well, I looted a guard. Suck it! He wasn't very well equipped for a guard. Actually, maybe he was well equipped for a guard. Uh, best things I find to loot are the weapons. They have the best value. And I got the same guy. Is there, there's two? Oh no, that's just one guy crumpled up. 
So this is your early money-making scheme. And really your only way of surviving. You would come here, you would go to a city that gets invaded a lot, and this one seems like it's a good one. And you would join in the battles a little bit, but only to the point where you can actually survive. You don't think... One of their guys could easily take out one of your guys. They are stronger than you. And no, let's not take that. One of the other options is you can trade. I already got him. And trading is good, but it's time consuming. It's very time consuming, but you can make a buttload of money. I'm not going to get into trading because, like I said, it does take a very, very long time. But you can see on these guys here, this is the core basics of trading. You've got the value of the item, the trade value, and the average value. As you can see, the value of the item here, this is all based in this town, is 109%, or er, the value of this item is 562. That's how much I would buy it for from a vendor. The trade value is 562, and that's how much I would sell it for. If you look at the scimitar, the value is 1265 versus the trade value of 253. So this is not a good trade item. But the med, cat, med kits, food items, other things like that are really good. Because this guy's average price is 514. And you can see the price markup of 109. So this is probably not the best place to explain this. But... Let's get you. Let's let's finish looting up these guys. Apparently, Meathead is going to be the only one doing it. It picks the closest guy. Oh, oh, which one gets there first? Oh, I already did this one. All right, good enough. Good enough. Let's check on our guys. Oh, Spike is good. Oh, they're both good. So we'll just select everybody. Come on down. I, I should actually have Meathead and Taslo go to bed, but I'm not really worried about it right now. I'm probably not going to leave this town. And I guess this is another bug. Where these guys can't actually leave. Their pathfinding got all derpy. So, whatever. They, they can hang out in there. So, let's head into this bar here. Because this seems like a good enough place as any. So, this is the barkeep. This is just some guy. Oh, this is a medic. And we can hire him for 2,500 cat. No. And that's just a one-time shot. You pay for them, and they are yours. <laughs> he looks really weird with his hand there. <laughs> anyway. This guy here, this is a guard. This is a shop guard. And all he says is don't steal anything. And this is the barman. So there's two ways to access shops. You can talk to this guy and say, show me what you got. And here we go. We are in the shop. And you can see what they'll, their markup is, your purchase price and everything. Right now, there's some things that are always 100. There's always 100%. Like these potatoes. There's water. Um, I've never seen them drop. Same thing with bread. But this is not the guy that I want to have. I want Spike. And there we go. So we're just going to sell all our crap here. I'm not even worrying about whether or not these weapons are better or not. Uh, I think I'm actually going to keep these advanced med kits and the splint kit. I do not have a splint kit. Except for that one now. But, yeah, this, this would be where you would trade, is you would deal with this guy. So, you would sell items to him, and buy items from him, bring them to other towns. The other way to access them is usually the counter right in front of them. So you can see here the money and everything that they had. And you can auto-arrange. If you can't fit something in, just hit auto-arrange. And chances are it'll 
arrange it. You can also pick it up and put it down, but that's generally not recommended because you may accidentally buy it. And you probably don't want to do that. So that's your basics for trading. That's your basics for combat. There's not a whole lot in the way of combat mechanics. You basically just click on the guy and watch the roles play. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't think that there's anyone left in here, is there? Let's talk to this guy. What do we got here? Uh, this guy can give me a facelift for 200 cat. I am not going to do that because I don't have any particular reason to. And how about this guy? Khalid. And he wants 700 cat to join up. So we will take him. And then it gives you the option. Wow. He has one wicked bald spot and a, a lopsided ponytail. <laughs> nice toupee, dude. Nice toupee. And his arms are a little wonky. The models still have a little work to go. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not flawless, but they're still pretty good. They're, but I, I don't generally modify them at all. All right, so now we've got a new character. Look at us. Look at us. We're, we're gaining crew members. We are becoming monstrous. And these guys are still stuck in there because they can't figure out how to get out. Uh, what do we got? So there's a lot of different shops. Uh, anywhere you want to get new members, you would go to the bar, which is obviously where we just were. And you can tell by the bottle and the glass. Convenient, huh? Any place with a bed, there's a little inn. And you can sleep there usually, or pretty much always. I've never seen a difference. It's always 100 cat per night. Or not per night, per bed. And this particular city has at least three of them. This, I am not entirely sure what this is. I'm in here all the time. I think this is... Oh, this is... Yeah, this is armor. This is your armor and blueprints. I haven't gotten into building yet. I, I know the basics of it, but I haven't gotten into it yet, so we're not going to get into it right now. Uh, this is where you would get, uh, like, med packs and other gear. Uh, I don't really get the hiking thing, but these are all stores. This just happens to be one place with three stores. So we got helmets, we've got backpacks, so, and med kits, backpack and medical supplies, and shoes. Aw, shoes. Everybody needs shoes, except for, you know, most of these guys. So, yeah, this is a huge area. You can do, you can pretty much exist in one town. Now, I do have my own outpost way over here and that I tried to zoom into. So, if we hover over this, your outpost. Faction is still nameless, so that didn't update when I updated my faction. So, I'm guessing it's just set and locked when you create it. And all it takes to create an outpost is to go into build mode and place down a building. The building doesn't even have to get built. And cancelling the build on the building doesn't remove the outpost. So, yeah. <laughs> I have this outpost that contains absolutely nothing, but it shows up on the map. And the, these circles are just tiny little villages or outposts. The squares are cities, a la the one we're in. And there is a day-night cycle. As far as I can tell, the day-night cycle doesn't do anything aside from, you know, make it darker. And as you can also see, you cannot see another city from where you are. There is actually one place where you can see the city. And it's most certainly not here. Like, there's one just on the other side of those mountains, but they're pretty far apart. Uh, where is it? I think from this one, you can see this city. Like, from Trader's Edge, you can see Brink. I think. Maybe it's these two. I am not sure. I have been all over the southern part of the map, and actually, I've been pretty much to all of these cities. 
I don't think I've made it to these guys. I definitely have not gone to the cannibal villages. Because that just scares the crap out of me. I can't do combat with crap. Whoa. I just <laughs> whipped around into a mountain. But it's really, really cool. I'm not showing even 1% of this game so far. So I'm actually going to end it here. I think I've shown a lot of what I wanted to show. And I am going to probably do a few more of these. And we will learn the game together. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And we will see you next time.